I want to talk about the spirit of wisdom. We're still dealing on the same subject, don't forget. Well, this time we're looking at the spirit of wisdom. The Bible talks about the spirit of wisdom. <clears throat> and remember, success is dependent on the wisdom that you have. The degree of success you'll enjoy will depend on the degree of wisdom that is manifested in your life. You cannot be more successful than the wisdom of God that is operational in your life. Never forget that. All right. I want to look at just for the terms, okay? Ephesians chapter number 1. I'd like to read from verse 15. <clears throat> Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. Now, Paul is writing to the Ephesian church. And here he makes, he uses certain expressions that we must observe. Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in, in the knowledge of him. Did you notice that? He said, I pray to God that he would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And we observed during our last teaching on three kinds of knowledge that he was talking here of the epignosis of him. Praise God. Full, exact knowledge of him. But it says, to have that kind of knowledge, you'd require what he calls the spirit of wisdom. In Revelation. Okay. Let's move on. So you underline the spirit of wisdom. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. According to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. And set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world but also in that which is to come. And had put all things under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that feel it all in all. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. All right, now you look at verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And I said, I want to talk about the spirit of wisdom. There is such a thing as the spirit of wisdom. What is the spirit of wisdom? Let's look at just a few. Turn to the book of Exodus, the Old Testament. Exodus chapter number 35. Are you there? Okay. Exodus chapter 35. And I want you to look at from verse 30 into 31. Verse 30. And Moses said unto the children of Israel, See, the Lord had called by name Bezaleel, the son of Uri, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah, that's a man, right? And it says, And he had filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom. 
I like that expression. Did you notice it? He had filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom. Then he says, in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. I like that. Now, he didn't say that the Lord had filled him with the Spirit of God in power. He didn't say in healing. But he was very specific as to what he meant. Now he could have said he had filled him with the Spirit of God. And that would have been enough. But he wanted us to, he wanted us to know in what area. He didn't say in leadership. He didn't say in prophecy. But it says, he had filled him, verse 31, he had filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, and to devise curious works to work in gold, and in silver, and in brass, and in the cotton of stones, to set them, and in cabin of wood, etc., etc., he filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom. Now we are talking about the spirit of wisdom. Now he lets us know that means the spirit of God operates in what? In wisdom. Manifesting himself in wisdom. Now uh, um, we have a book that's coming off the press maybe within the next few days. The title is Seven Spirits of God. A very powerful book and every one of you should make sure you have several copies did you get that so you put one in the house one in the office everywhere <laughs> oh yeah seven spirits of God that's the subject of that book now one of the one of the spirits one of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of wisdom now let us look at that would you turn quickly to the book of Isaiah Book of Isaiah, chapter number 11. <clears throat> Have you found it? This is Isaiah's prophecy. And this is the 11th chapter. We will read from verse 1. And I want you to understand what it says and what it does not say. You ready? From verse 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. Did you notice the word branch? I want you to mark it. He says a branch. He didn't say branches. He says a branch shall grow out of his roots. When a branch is growing out of a root, what do you say? As a stem. Come on. All right. So notice it didn't say branch or grow out of the vine. <laughs> it says from the roots. Okay, verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make, oh boy, I love this, verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding. Do you remember Sunesis? And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. That's Sunesis. He shall not judge according to his senses. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge. You remember phronesis? The wisdom of the just? The wisdom of the righteous? He says, but he shall function with phronesis. He shall have excellent synesis. He shall be of quick understanding. Hallelujah. All right. 
And we're talking about the spirit of wisdom, right? Okay, now you go into the book. We're coming back here, so you just keep a marker there. Go to the book of Zechariah chapter number 3. Zechariah chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 8. Now if you can't find Zechariah, you just go into the table of contents <laughs> and locate it. Alright? Okay. Or else you go to Matthew and then start moving backward. To Malachi and then you, you find it. Alright? Zechariah chapter number 3. We are reading from verse 8. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wander at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Uh-oh. He told us just now that there shall come forth a branch from the root of Jesse. A branch. Now, he says, my servant, the branch. So he's talking about the same person. I want you to notice something in verse 9. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graven thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. He says, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Now, you know, there's... Um, um, the study of prophecy. Now, not many Christians study prophecy. They, they just listen to prophecies. But they don't study prophecy. In studying prophecy, you get to understand the, the terms of different prophets. And it will make it easier for you to also interpret what the messages, uh, the, what messages they were giving. Whether for now, for the past or future. But now I want to look at something this prophet says here. He says, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. And I want to mark that. Upon one stone shall be seven eyes. What do you mean seven eyes? That's verse 9. First, there are certain things we've observed. He talks about the branch. Then he says something about seven eyes. Being upon one stone. He says, for behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua. Upon one stone shall be seven eyes. And when he says upon one stone shall be seven eyes, he didn't say upon the stone shall be seven eyes. He says upon one stone shall be seven eyes. And that's important when you observe whether or not he's dealing with the definite article. Okay? Alright, now you turn to the book of Revelation. Chapter 5. And I'm looking at verse 6. Are you there? <clears throat> Maybe we should look from verse 5. And see whether I would observe anything that we've seen before. From verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David hath prevailed. To open the book and lose the seven seals thereof. Look at verse 6 now. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. Seven eyes. Which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Oh boy. And then, I'd like to mark that thing again, where it says, sent forth into all the earth. He says the seven eyes are the seven spirits of God. Did you notice that? The seven eyes are the seven spirits of God. And so we go back to what that man was saying. Upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Now, we know when it says, I lay in Zion a stone. Okay? A tried stone. A precious cornerstone. So we know Jesus is called a stone. 
Okay? We know that. We know he's called a branch. And now, we've observed something he talks about, the stone. Then he says, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. And John the Revelator tells us here that uh, the seven eyes are the seven spirits of God. Praise the Lord. So that, ter- that tells us, go back to, let's go back to, um, uh, maybe I should explain something to you. When you study the writings of Paul and uh, uh, the prophet Isaiah, there are some, some things you'll observe about their use of language. Many times they use two words together. To express different thoughts. And if you're not careful, you would think he's talking about one thing, but he's talking about two. Very easily, like some of what what we've been studying, uh, when we were dealing with knowledge, you noticed he would say uh, wisdom and knowledge. Sometimes he would say wisdom and prudence. Okay? Here's a grace and truth. Putting them together as though they're based on the same thing that he wants to talk about. Now, his language is very much like the expression of the prophet Isaiah. Do you remember when we were studying Isaiah, um, uh, when he w- we talked about the extraordinary strategist? Okay? His name shall be called Wonderful. You know, he says, Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. Okay? The Everlasting Father. And we notice he is referring to Wonderful Counselor as he means the Everlasting Father. Okay? So, you look at how they you have to study their words when they put two together whether they mean the general and the specific or two separate things but you have to look at their other writings to be able to tell this praise god all right now i said that because of what we have just observed and how isaiah puts his message so we go back to isaiah chapter 11 <clears throat> We're written again from verse 1 There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse And a branch shall grow out of his roots You remember Jesus is called the root And the offspring of David <laughs> That's interesting He's the root and he's the offspring of David He's saying he brought him forth And he came from him that's nice. Okay. Look at verse 2. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Then it says, The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel. Now, when you have shall rest upon him, do you have a full stop or a comma there? Tell me. Is that a full stop? Okay. Listen. It says, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Full stop. Is that what you have? It says, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Come out. Right? Okay. It tells us something. Now, many times, if you observed, if you studied carefully the lives of the judges of Israel, uh, like Samson, and then some of the kings, um, and a great man, There's a particular term that the writers used when something happened. The writer would say, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. Or, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. Did you read such things? Okay. Now, whatever followed would let us know 
what that spirit was about. What kind of spirit he meant. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David. What did he make him do? When the spirit of the Lord came upon Saul, what happened? Made him a king. The spirit of the Lord came upon David, made him a king. And with him, destroyed the enemies of Israel. When the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson, what happened? He ruled over his enemies. So, that term, the spirit of the Lord, really means the spirit of lordship. Which means, when the Lord manifests himself as Lord in the camp, or Lord in your life, or Lord over the situation. When you say, the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon us. He was the Lord. Now there's the spirit of grace. Are you, are you following this? Alright, the Bible says the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Okay? Now the prophet said, crying grace, grace. Okay? So there's an understanding of the spirit of God that we need to have as God's children. Without that understanding, we will function as ordinary human beings. Okay, now there's a reason for that. I want us to look at it again. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Come on. Then it says, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Now, I dare say that you study this carefully, you'll see he's actually talking about the seven spirits of God. This is Isaiah's language. And when you study the scriptures, you begin to locate these seven spirits of God. We've already been told that the eyes of the Lord that he talked about were the, uh, the, the seven spirits. Okay? There were the seven spirits of God, the seven eyes. Okay, now let's look at, let's count them. Now the spirit of the Lord, which is the spirit of lordship, when the Lord shows up as boss. Are you there? Oh, hallelujah. When you are oppressed in your life, when you're going through trials, when you're going through terrible things in your life, you need the spirit of the Lord to intervene for you. You see that? You need the spirit of the Lord. Let me explain something. Do you remember in, in Exodus, you study book of Exodus chapter number 6, you read from verses 2 and 3, and then go down to verses 4 to 6. Something happened there. God introduced himself to Moses. He said, Moses, I appear to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, by the name of El Shaddai. He said, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them? Then he said, Moses, I am Jehovah. And I'm going to bring you out of Egypt with a strong hand. Now, that's very, very remarkable. Meaning, as El Shaddai, he would not function as Jehovah. Who's Jehovah? Jehovah is the Lord. El Shaddai is the strong and breasted one. He nourishes you. He protects you. He takes care of you. But if you need somebody to bring you out of trouble with a strong hand, you need Jehovah. You see, so he, he manifested himself to the children of Israel in his names. For example, when they needed healing, he didn't come and say, I am El Shaddai. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. He revealed himself. Now, when, when the children of Israel won the battle against the Amalekites, what happened? Moses brought forth another name of Jehovah. He said, Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner. Praise God. All right. So you see, the Lord manifests himself in different ways. But he is one and the same. Amen. All right, let's look at this. Now, I want you to count. 
the Spirit of the Lord. That's one. That's the Spirit of Lordship. Okay? The Spirit of Wisdom. The Spirit of Understanding. The Spirit of Counsel. The Spirit of Might. The Spirit of Knowledge. The Spirit of the Fear of the Lord. Now, we've dealt with this in, um, in detail in the book that's coming out, I believe, um, probably later this week or so. Seven Spirits of God. Now, the point I was trying to make for you here is that the Spirit of Wisdom is one of the seven Spirits of God. And we have observed there where it says the Spirit of Wisdom. Okay? The spirit of wisdom is one of the seven spirits of God. And we remember also that he said, Upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Now if you read in 1 Peter chapter 2, you study from verse 5, it says, Ye also as living stones. We are living stones. Each one of us is a living stone. The Bible says we are built upon the chief cornerstone, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And since it says, Upon one stone shall be seven eyes, and those seven eyes are the seven spirits of God. It means that each one of us ought to have the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah. Now, seven is the number of completion. It's the number of perfection. That's the reason for seven. When it says seven spirits of God, he's talking about the completeness. Now, that's actually where the term, the fullness of the Spirit came from. You've heard people talk about the fullness of the Spirit. Many, many Christians, many years ago, used to use that term. They would say, have you received the fullness of the Spirit? Because they understood that not everybody operated in the fullness of the Spirit. There is such a thing as the fullness of the Spirit. But many have thought more... On the other side, when you say that uh, the Spirit, the, they think of the Spirit of God like water or, or, or wind, you know, some gas, some fluid. So they think, well, you got some and you can add some more. Well, it's more important when you understand the seven spirits of God. And some people function with some of these spirits rather than all was supposed to have the completeness of the description of the spirit of god now what does this mean that the holy ghost is in seven personalities no but in the same way that god said to Moses, your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did not know me as Jehovah. They knew me as El Shaddai. So he operated in their lives and taught them that way. But then he wanted Moses to know him better. He said, I am Jehovah. Until you know him as your healer, you will never receive divine healing. There are Christians who don't believe in divine healing. They're good Christians. But they don't believe in divine healing. So what? They will never know divine healing. Because they do not know the healer today. They think he used to know the history of his healing. But they do not know him today as their healer. They don't know Jehovah Rapha. Has been fulfilled in Jesus. Because the Bible says. Thou hast exalted thy word. Above all thy name. And he didn't say all, above all thy names. He said above all thy name. Meaning above all the revelations of your name. Because he has one name. And his name was revealed in several different names. Are you still there? I'm a professor of theology. You have to follow what I'm telling you. Hallelujah. It's a fact. Are you still there? Yes. So, he says, Thou hast exalted thy word 
thy word, above all thy name. Meaning above all the revelations of your name. Now, what is his word? Jesus said, thy word is truth. What is truth? Reality. Now what did Jesus say about himself? I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible says Jesus Christ is the word. It says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Amen. So the word of God, Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus is the living word. He is the express image, the manifestation of all of those names that reveal the character and the personalities and qualities of the Father. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you still there? Okay. Now, we're talking about the spirit of wisdom. So we have established that there is such a thing, there is such an expression as the spirit of wisdom. And it's a perfect expression of the spirit of God when he manifests himself in the wisdom of God. He says, the spirit of wisdom, Sophia. And now I want you to observe what is said here. Go back to book of Ephesians chapter number one. We're looking at verse 17. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Oh, hallelujah. Sebora haski the haster. Give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Maybe I should explain something to you there that's, that is important. He prays to the Father that he would grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation. I want you to mark the word revelation. <clears throat> and then it says, in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. I want you to also uh, under, uh, under, underline the word enlightened. Okay, firstly, when it says the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, sometimes um, the expression looks to us like he means there's a spirit of wisdom and probably a spirit of revelation. Okay? No, he's dealing with one and the same thing. This time, Paul is dealing with the general and the specific. Okay? He's looking at the spirit of wisdom. Bringing what? Revelation. Because the, the Greek word there is apocalypsis. Meaning to unveil something. It means to unveil a mystery. Okay? You are revealing a mystery. Something that is unknown. You are revealing a secret. So that's what he's talking about. So he says the spirit of wisdom. And the word that's used there for and, you could have and, in, or, for, in the Greek. Substituted. So he could go, the spirit of wisdom in revelation. Or, the spirit of wisdom for revelation. In the exact knowledge of him. And that's the reason why the amplified version, can you go... If you have the Amplified, all right, if you don't, relax. The Amplified version says, For I always pray to God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. He says, of insight into mysteries and secrets. That God will grant you insight into mysteries and secrets. That's what the spirit of wisdom will do for you. He'll bring you revelation. I said the Greek is apocalypsis. Now there's a reason I'm giving you that because of the next thing that you have in uh, verse 18. Where it says, the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light. There's a difference between the two. Now, when it's flooded with light, definitely there is uh, not only an understanding, it means there's also an unveiling. 
but it's not as much an unveiling as what you call the first one. Hey, are you with me? Let's look at it. He says that the Lord will grant you the spirit of wisdom and apocalypsis. So, which means seeing into mysteries, having insight into mysteries. Mysteries are being unveiled. It's like you're taking, up, taking the cover off and you say, wow, a mystery has been unveiled. Now in verse 18, he says, the eyes of your understanding being, the Greek this time is fortizo, meaning flooded with light, meaning the rays of light thrown on the subject. In the one case, you are unveiling to look at it. In the other case, it is covered with a darkness, so you turn on the light. That's why it says that you may become aware, idle, that you may know. So when the light shines on it, you become aware. Now you know. Praise the Lord. Meaning it was for you all the time. All you needed was light. But this other one was veiled, it was covered. So you need what? Wisdom. Come on, come on, come on. This is so powerful because what he's telling you is this. Wisdom will unveil the secret things of God to you. He'll lead you into mysteries. Divine mysteries. And life will cease to be mysterious to you. Hallelujah. There is such a thing as the spirit. The spirit of wisdom. He says he'll give you insight into mysteries and secrets and unveiling. He'll begin to tell you what's behind it. I said he'll give you special knowledge. And one beautiful thing about the spirit of wisdom is this. He goes with understanding and counsel. You know, Wisdom, when wisdom talks to you, he can give you counsel. Now, without, without, without the counsel, you may not know what to do. Okay? So, he not only... Maybe you should write this down. You ready? Okay. So, I'll put it in a certain way for you. It'll be easy for you to remember it. Now, I said, when the spirit of wisdom has his way in your life... He'll bring you, number one, revelation. You put apocalypsis there, as, and I've explained to you, okay? You, you use the word unveiling, revealing mysteries, okay? All right. Then number two, he throws what? Light. He brings you light, okay? And I said the, the Greek word is fortizo. So he, he lightens your parts, okay? He illumines your mind, Okay? Then, number three, he brings you counsel and direction. Counsel and direction. It's just that we're out of time.
và nhớ thương giọt mưa rơi hay giọt lệ tử hờn như ngàn sợi tơ vương đang tóc rối mưa răng mắt cho lòng ai lạc lối ảo ảnh vô theo sức khói dần tan tình trái ngang duy kiếp lắm bẽ bàng mong mỏi đợi trong giỏi giang nối tiếc đường sương gió bước độc hành mãi miết đời phù du đâu ai biết ngày sau tìm dư hương trong mưa gió nghẹn ngào sống nhân thế muôn ngày sau vậy gọi tàn giông bão niềm đau còn đọng lại chờ trong khi rượu vợi tình ta ai hẹn đâu mà mắt đẫm lệ nhòa thương ra giết cuộc tình xa vạn dặm 